and welcome to Kill Switch. This is a Yandere dating game in which you reconnect with your best friend from childhood. The more time you spend together, the more you realize that this might not have been a coincidental meeting after all. Let's get started. You wake with a start. A distant rolling boom violently shakes you from your sleep. Your heart silently jackhammers in your chest. After realizing you're part of the waking world, you relax a bit. It takes some time to adjust to the dimly lit room. Your mind is foggy and your mouth is dry like cotton. Maybe downing that whole bottle of bottom shelf booze last night wasn't such a great idea after all. Um, what's your name again? Of course I know my name's Uni, I'm not that hungover. With a groan and protest from your worn out bed springs, you roll onto your side. Sitting on top of your bedside table is a battery operated alarm clock. A reliable substitute should a power outage or a dead phone battery keep you from waking up on time. Wait, I have that exact lamp in the same color. The alarm clock reads 8.23 a.m. You're scheduled to be at work at 8.30 today. Shit, I better get up now if I want to make it to work on time. Will you sleep in or go to work? I'll go to work. With an annoyed grumble, you tumble out of bed and get dressed in record time. On your way out, you grab your bag and tug on a raincoat and slam the door with a little more force than necessary. The rain was just a light sprinkle now, much lighter than when you first woke up. Normally, rainy days are a source of your enjoyment, but right now, it's just another annoyance. Luckily, your apartment is just walking distance from your job. You trudge down the wet street, avoiding puddles along the way. You arrive just in the nick of time for your shift. You quickly put away your belongings and coat and slip on your name tag. Your morning routine consists of collecting books from the night drop and reshelving them. You make a beeline towards the front of the library. However, your attention is drawn to the person standing right in front of it. Look, he's here. He's kinda cute. A tall, lanky man casually browses the Book of the Week display. You feel a small amount of pride as you had the pleasure of setting it up the night before. The stranger takes a book from the shelf and flips to the back to read the synopsis. You take a breath and a second to get your customer service persona as you approach, taking care to make some noise to not startle him as you approach him. Good morning, my name's Zinni. Are you finding everything okay? His ears flick at attention before his gaze meets yours. He looks at you with soft, doe-like eyes through long, luscious lashes. He smiles warmly at you. Zinni, such a lovely name. However, I think rabbit is more fitting after all, don't you think? He winks at you in a playful manner, like it's an inside joke between the two of you. You can your hand and smile back sheepishly, not fully understanding his meaning. Seriously, who says that? And was he really flirting with you right now? And what did he mean by, after all? He seems to pick up on your confusion immediately, whether by the face you're making or the growing stretch of awkward silence. He doesn't express disappointment, more along the lines of understanding and maybe a little bit of embarrassment. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I guess you don't remember me. No. I'm not surprised. It has been a while since you saw me last. I was a lot shorter, scruffier, and was more ears and tail than child. My mind is short-circuiting, and if my confusion wasn't apparent before, it sure is showing itself now. Something about him seems so familiar, yet you can't seem to put your finger on it. Do I really know him? I have a feeling if we say no, it's gonna end badly. It's clove, you know? Like the spice? I'm sorry, I just can't seem to recall. Do we go to the same school, perhaps? You offer out of politeness, not really sure what to say. He seemed really jazzed to see you, and you were feeling really guilty that you couldn't place a name to the face of the stranger from your past. However, you are having a hard time recalling your distant memories. The atmosphere turns uncomfortable fast as you stand there awkwardly. Uh, sorry to bother you. I, I can see now isn't a good time. You don't catch what he said at first, but you see him looking over your shoulder to a queue that started to form at the front desk. Make the divines for that one. Yeah. I should get back to work. You weren't sure how to disengage from the conversation, so you just dip out of it entirely. Well, that was awkward. Work was uneventful and slow. Normally, these kinds of work days bore you to death, but today, your mind kept going back to Cove. You were now mentally kicking yourself for not giving him your number. Well, we did live in a small town. It would only be a matter of time before we ran into each other again, right? With an audible sigh, you gather your belongings and leave work. Your stomach painfully rumbles with sustenance, reminding you of your lack of breakfast or lunch for that matter. You had planned on making a quick stop at the market anyways. Scanning the parking lot, you notice the only other cars are in their designated staff-only parking area. Wait, what the heck? This is a supermarket that I go to. Did the per is the person who made this Australian as well? Because <laughs> that's the that's the Woolworth side, and that's the brand of cereal I get. As you walk into the store, you're keenly aware of the lack of customers. Aside from the occasional employee stocking inventory, there's no one else around but you. You must have just missed the rush hour. You grab a handbasket and start tossing things inside. Fresh produce, cooking oil, noodles, some snacks, and the like. They say it's a bad idea to shop on an empty stomach, but you have been full of bad ideas lately. What's one more? You make your way to the meat aisle, wanting to browse the markdown section for tonight's dinner. Satisfied with your selection, you make your way to the register with a full basket. There's someone standing in line in front of you. Say hello. Hey, Clove. He turns to you. Surprise flashes across his face. Oh, Yinny. He seems genuinely surprised to see you. He fidgets with the hem of his sweater. So, I... 
wanted to apologize about earlier at the library. I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. And if I did, I'd like to make it up to you. Would you like to go out to dinner? Your expression softens at his awkwardness. It sounds rehearsed, like he was waiting to see me again. Do you want to have dinner with Clove? If I say no, it's going to end poorly. Uh, I'm sorry, Clove. Today just isn't a good time. I think I'm just going to go home and rest. You feel a pang of guilt, but maybe it's best to let him down easy instead of getting his hopes up with a maybe or another time. His body is as stiff as a board, and his expression is strained, like he's struggling to hold it together. Ooh. Hey, I get it. I understand. That was really sudden of me to ask like that. You can't blame a guy for asking, right? His laugh is strained, almost like it's forced. Maybe some other time then? The cashier graciously spares me from this painful conversation as they hand Clover's receipt. He grabs his bags and rushes out of the store. Poor guy. He probably was just wanting to get to know me better and I had to shoot him down like that. You feel even more guilt for rebuffing him for the second time today. You put the thought away from your mind as you pay for your groceries and head home. You arrive home unceremoniously, shedding your soaked shoes and pants as soon as you make it past the threshold. You put away your groceries that you don't need for dinner tonight. Hastily, you prepare dinner. The savory aromas from the cooking makes your mouth water. You enjoy your hot meal after a long day. It really hits the spot. After dinner, you wash up and get ready for bed. Sleep is ready to claim you as you pull back the covers and climb into bed. As soon as your head hits the pillows, your eyes immediately become heavy. The warmth of your cozy bed and the constant pattering of rainfall lull you into a deep dreamless sleep. You are not disturbed by the droning sounds from the raging storm. Someone open my door! I hear footsteps! Sleep tight little rabbit. I'll see you tomorrow. You reach the end of the demo. Thanks for playing Kill Switch. Okay, so that was the bad route. Let's load up this and we can say we remember him. You squint your eyes as you try to place a name to the face. And suddenly, like a light switch being flipped on, it all comes back in a rush. It's him, the little beast kid from your neighborhood. You hadn't thought about the overly excitable boy who would come over and play with you for hours on end. You didn't have many friends when you were growing up, but you did have him. Your very best friend. His name was... Clove! You immediately throw your arms around his midsection and hold onto him in the tightest of bear hugs. He flinches not from the contact itself, but more so from the sudden closeness. Instead of moving away, he leans in and wraps his arms around your body in a gentle yet firm hold as he reciprocates the hug. You only now realize just how much he towers over you. Oh, so he's tall. Your face is tucked right between his pecs. Hey, yo! <laughs> like the face planning in the titty drawing? And the familiar sound of his beating heart rums softly in your ear. Before things get awkward, you pull back and share a smile with him. Holy crap, Clove! I haven't seen you since we were in grade school. How have you been? You look good. You look good? Of all the things you could have said, why would you say that one? His smile doesn't quite meet his eyes. Before you can backpedal or embarrass yourself further, he jumps in. Oh, thank you. And you know how it is, I'm just trying to survive. He chuckles softly, or as soft as he can. For a man as unassuming as he looks, he sure has a deep timber to his voice. I hear that. That's the most you can do sometimes. I had no idea you still lived here. Yep, I'm still here. Living in a small town can be difficult, but it feels like home, you know? It's nice to have something to come back to. He looks almost wistful as he speaks. Oh, yeah, I get what you mean. I just recently moved back home after finishing up college, and here I am. You spread your arms as if to emphasize your meaning. He chuckles and gives a light nod. It's so good to see you, rabbit. There's that nickname again, Rabbit. You don't remember, but he would often call you that when you were kids. You don't remember exactly the reason behind the choice of the name, but it just stuck. It might have been an insult long ago. However, when he says it now, it's like the sweetest thing to have ever touched his lips. His knowing smile seems to let on you are both having the same thoughts. Well, I'd love to stay and chat some more, but I really need to be going. And my disappointment shows Clove doesn't react to it. Oh, okay. Don't let me keep you. It was good to see you again, Clove. We exchange another hug goodbye. However, this time... He inclines his head towards mine. His breath hitches softly in his throat as my scent floods his senses. What was meant to be a friendly hug immediately turned into something more personal. But before you have a chance to do or say anything that might implicate you, he breaks the hug. After we part, he looks like he wants to say something more. However, he just waves in farewell on his way to the door. You want to stay and talk more, but there's a queue forming at the checkout desk and you're the only one here. What will you do? Ask him to hang out? Screw it. This might be your one and only opportunity. You swallow the lump in your throat and take the plunge. Um... Hey, do you want to come over and hang out tonight after work? His face lights up immediately. Really? I'd love to. His smile is infectious and you grin like an idiot. Awesome, here's my address. Yay! You just give your address out like right now? Drop by any time after 6pm. I'll see you then. You quickly scribble your information on the slip of receipt paper. You hand the paper with your information on it over to him. He doesn't skip a beat as he takes it from you, not even bothering to look at it before he tucks it into his pocket. Because he already knows where you live. I wouldn't miss it for the world. And with that, he's gone, leaving me to my wandering thoughts. Work was uneventful and slow. Normally, these kinds of workdays bore you to tears, but today your mind buzzes with thoughts of clove. You racked your brain for dinner ideas for tonight. 
What if he has dietary concerns or any food allergies? Surely he's not a picky eater and will be fine with whatever you decide to make, right? You recall a time in your youth when he stayed for dinner and would clean his plate even on meatloaf nights. Chloe sure had an appetite. You smile as you reminisce about the memories of Chloe in your youth. And soon after your shift comes to a close, you gather your belongings and head out. Your stomach painfully rumbles with sustenance. A silent reminder that you should stop by the grocery store on your way home. Scanning the parking lot, you notice the only other cars are in the designated staff-only parking area. As you walk into the store, you're keenly aware of the lack of customers. Aside from the occasional employee stocking inventory, there's no one else around but you. You must have just missed the rush hour. You grab a hand basket and start tossing things inside. Fresh produce, cooking oil, noodles, some snacks and the like. They say it's a bad idea to shop on an empty stomach, but you have been full of bad ideas lately, so what's one more? You make your way to the meat aisle, wanting to browse the markdown section for tonight's dinner. Satisfied with your selection, you make your way to the register with a full basket. There's someone standing in the line in front of you. Say hi. Clove doesn't notice you, as his attention is focused on paying for his groceries. His face is difficult to read, but it looks like he's deep in his thoughts. Hey there, stranger. You come here often. You cringe internally at the corny line. Clove jumps in surprise and whips his head in your direction. He looks like he just got caught with his pants down. What? <laughs> yeah, hi. I didn't think I'd be seeing you again so soon. I mean, you are coming over tonight, aren't you? Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. I forgot I had to pick up a few things after work. Decided to get it done while it wasn't swamped in here. Clove nods his head along in agreement. Before he can say anything else, the cashier hands him his receipt, ready for the next customer. Ah, uh, that's my cue. I guess we can chat later tonight. He says matter-of-factly, like I could have possibly forgotten about our plans. You smile and wave him farewell as he takes his leave. See you then. You call after him. You pay for your items and exit the store. You arrive home and change out of your soaked shoes and clothes and into something dry and comfortable. You start preparing dinner for your guests tonight. You had planned on making a simple stir fry which would take no time at all. The savory aroma from your cooking fills your apartment quickly, making your mouth water. You set the table and glance over at your phone for the time. That must be him. You rush over to open the door. Hi, come on in. You open the door for him to enter. Thank you for having me over. Of course, I'm glad you decided to come. You lead him over to the small kitchen at table. Have a seat, dinner's ready. You serve him his plate and sit down from across him. Conversation is sparse at first but you are both too busy eating. He seems to be enjoying his meal, and you make a mental note. As dinner wraps up, you attempt to clean up and put away the dishes. Clove, ever the gentleman, offers to help with the dishes despite your protest. He was still grateful for his offer. Not waiting the evening to be over yet, you think fast. Do you want to watch a movie? You remember there was this flick that just came out you wanted to see. What did you have in mind? Hmm. The two of you make your way to the living room and park yourselves on the couch. What kind of movies do you like? There's this movie that just came out. It's about the medical student spiral into madness when the reagent he invents, originally meant to speed up the body's healing process, reanimates the dead. Oh, that sounds interesting, let's watch it. He tucks his long legs under his body and sits comfortably on the couch. You follow him as you put the film on. Once again, you fall into comfortable silence as the attention is focused on the film. A tiny yawn escapes you. Clove shifts in his seat, leaning in towards you slightly as he tries to find a comfortable spot on your old worn out couch. His arm is draped around the back of the furniture. He is attentively watching the movie, totally engrossed. Snuggle up to him. You lean into his side and gently rest your head on his shoulder. In turn, he drapes an arm over you and rests his head atop yours. Before long, you hear a soft rumbling sound. It's coming from Clove. Is he purring? Cl Clove, are you purring? His body goes rigid at your side and the sound immediately cuts off. Uh, no, are you? His tail fluffs up as well and it reminds you of a spooked cat. You hide your smile in the folds of his shirt as you snuggle up close to him resting your head on his chest. I must be hearing things, I suppose. His posture relaxes when you curl against him. Soon, you hear an unmistakable purr resonating from Clove's core, much softer than before. Your eyelids grow heavy as you struggle to keep them open. The draining TV is the only background noise, and you're lulled to sleep by the white noise. You reach the end of the demo. Thank you for playing Kill Switch. All right, and that is the end of Kill Switch. It was interesting. I wish we had more to go off on. Because there's little signs peppered in here and there, clearly showing that, you know, he's purposely there. Like when he's waiting at the store, they talk about how he stood there like he was waiting for you to talk to him, so like he knew you were already there. It's intriguing, but I really, I hope for an update soon so we get to find out more about Clove. I like that art though. I want more lore about the world as well. I'm very, I'm such a lore girly. Like, is everybody in the world a uh, beastkin or is it just beastkin and humans? You know, I feel like that'd be really interesting. But thank you so much for watching the video and for hanging out with me. If you guys like the video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. And until next time, take care.